Welcome to the High Tech Freedom Podcast. This is a podcast where we bring successful tech sales professionals, thought leaders, and entrepreneurs to share best practices, insights, and lessons learned with other tech sales professionals. As a sales professional, the more we learn, the more we earn. Once we earn it, how can we put those hard earned commission dollars back to work to build additional income streams that will create the freedom we are all working to achieve? I'm your host, Chris Freeman. I'm a high tech sales leader, real estate investor, and lifetime learner. Hello, high tech freedom listeners. I hope you're having a great week. So, today I want to talk a little bit about using video in how you sell and ultimately using video to elevate your sales. Now, some of you may be doing this already. And if you're actively using video as part of your sales process today, I'd love to hear about it. Reach out, love to hear your story. In fact, I'd love to bring you on as a guest and share some of your lessons learned because I, I do think it's it's an evolving process and some people are doing it better than others and the technology and the tools also play uh, a big role in making it easier. So let, let's talk a little bit about how to use it. So when I'm talking about video elevating your sales, I'm not talking about video marketing. I'm not talking about putting out a bunch of TikTok videos, Instagram videos, or LinkedIn videos. Those may play a role, but that's a topic for a different day. I'm talking about video as a communication tool with your customers and prospects. So, you know, as I think about in any sales engagement, there are a few hurdles that you must get past. Number one, you need to build a relationship. I mean, it's human to human selling that just has to happen most of the time. Number two, you need to communicate some value that your product or business has and some of the outcomes that the customer can see as a result of working with you, your company, your products, your solutions. Number three, you need to find money or the customer needs to find money. And number four, you need to differentiate yourself from the competition. So I I really believe that video can help supercharge some of these hurdles. Not sure about finding the money, but it definitely can play a role in building relationships, communicating your value, and really creating some enhanced differentiation between what you do and what maybe what your competition does. So if you're not using video today, where should you start? Well, start by, I think, I mean, think about all those conversations that you have with your prospects and customers today. Start by listening and taking note of the questions that you get from your customer and from your prospects. And if you start to hear a question multiple times, write it down and then go record a response. Of course, answer it while in the meeting, but go ahead and record a a response for that and save it. Now you have it in your video database. And here's, here's the reason why. If multiple customers are asking you that question when you're there, there's a high probability that your other customers and your other prospects will have the same question, but maybe they haven't actually had the opportunity to ask it for whatever reason. So what I would do is take that common question, create a short video response. Once done, you could follow up from your meeting and include that video as a follow-up in your recap. Just like you, your customers are going to forget most of what you said. Having that video answer is just an opportunity to reinforce the response, reinforce the information, and uh, make it easier for them to kind of come back to it and remember uh, the details that you gave them. Next, think about the post-meeting follow-up where maybe the customer did not get to ask the question. So meeting's over, and you know they maybe you went down a certain discussion track and they never did ask that question that was probably on their mind. Well, man, how powerful is it to follow up with the customer and say, hey, by the way, you did not ask this question, but uh, it comes up quite a bit. And so I wanted to, pa- I recorded a quick video on this question and some insights, and I wanted to pass it along to you. That's such a, I mean, it's such a powerful tool, so professional and getting ahead of what the customer is worried about, what the customer's thinking about. <laughs> you know, I mean, think about this. You, you've, I'm sure you've been down a sales cycle before if you're listening to this podcast. How many times have you been down the path of your sales cycle and a question, concern, or issue is brought up late in the sales cycle that ultimately delays things? 
I mean, it happens. So frustrating. Well, the more you can pull these questions to the front of the process, address it, possibly identify it as an area of concern, the better off you'll be. You'll be able to get ahead of those things early in the sales cycle. Now, I work in the tech sales world, and so there's so much opportunity to share follow-up on common technical questions or even simple how-to questions. You know, and this might be a good uh, a good example or an idea for many of my sales engineers that are listening to the podcast. This extra step of just being a little bit more thorough will help you stand out with your contact. You'll be viewed as more professional, more thoughtful about their needs, and you'll ultimately further the professional relationship by creating the opportunity to build uh, a personal relationship, right? I mean, it's sometimes as much as we want to make connections, sometimes we just have to get down and, and have some business conversations and get a seat at the table, get some uh, initial access to then build the personal relationship. Because by the way, personal relationships take longer to build than business relationships. So if you're coming in super professional, super organized, super thoughtful, you're buying yourself more time to then make that personal connection. I want to break in with this quick commercial from me. I am very excited to announce that we have our first multifamily real estate deal for the year. This is a really nice boutique 88 unit complex in Tempe, Arizona, which is an incredibly strong submarket of the Phoenix area. And we are partnered with my friend Reed and his company at the RSN Group. They're the, the ones that found the deal. And they also have another asset uh, very close by this particular property. Investment spots on this one, they're going to fill up quickly because it is also structured to accept 1031 exchanges. And there's a number of exchanges out there right now looking for a home. So if you're interested, just contact us through hightechfreedom.com or you could book a call using the link in the show notes. And even if you just want to learn a little bit more about the investing process, let's chat. I'm happy to share and follow up with some educational resources. Now back to the show. Another great value in using video responses is the ability to speak to your proposal or value of your offering when you're not in the room. You may have created the most compelling offer, the most compelling solution for your client. But, you know, maybe you're just not high enough in the account. But hey, don't worry, you got a great champion. Well, you know that your great champion may not represent the business case as well as you do. Um, the reality is they're not doing that day in and day out. They they know the organization better than you do, but just they may not represent your story the, the whys behind your solution as well as you, especially if your champion is a more technical champion in nature. Your video recap will help do that for you. Now, you'll have a proposal, I'm sure, but the video can capture some of the highlights from the proposal and even personalize it, maybe even add some color that is not quite captured in the proposal the way you want it. Put the professional proposal with the video recap together uh, and I just think that's so powerful. So let's say you're at the right executive level and you've done your proposal review, right? You sat down, went to the meeting, the top floor, you, you know, maybe things went pretty good, but it's possible that you missed something really important. Sometimes it's just hard to get everything communicated in one session. And maybe you, you, you walked away and you didn't feel that you connected 100% of the solution to the business problem. Again, a video recap is an opportunity to follow up with the perfect recap. Maybe the client said something in the meeting that caught you off a little, a little off guard. I mean, you prepared so much for this one meeting, but you know what? Sometimes you get surprised. And maybe they put you to, they hit you with a question, put you in a situation where eh, maybe your response or how you handled it wasn't um, top of your game. Well, you can include a recap of that response in your video recap. It's an opportunity to redo it. And by the way, I would have no problem saying, hey, you know, you asked this question during the meeting and I didn't, you know, I was a little bit caught off guard, um, you know, whatever, but I, I don't feel that I, I gave the uh, best response possible. Maybe I left off a couple of things that I thought were really important to your business. So I wanted to just take a moment and, and recap your question and recap some thoughts around that and pass that along to you. I, I mean, I think just being open and honest about that 
would uh, just says a lot about you and, and it's authentic and, and delivers the information that the customer is looking for. Now, here's one of the challenges. As you start to build up your database of video responses, you'll need to get organized. This is an area that I'm not great at, but you'll have to figure out how do you store them? How do you title them? How do you quickly find them and quickly follow up with them? You know, it, it, it's like many of the companies I've worked for, has they have tons of content, lots of white papers, lots of documents on the quote internet, but I can never find any of that stuff. Your videos can become the same way. So there's definitely a process of getting organ, organized. For example, outside the tech sales world, uh, I often have networking calls with people that want to learn more about real estate investing. I've done it for a long time and you know, I've successfully done it for 20 years. And so I'm just happy to share questions and pass along lessons learned if somebody wants to chat with me. If they have a question about, for example, a real estate syndication, um, I'll answer the question. But then I, I actually created a short video that uh, includes just all the mechanics of how it works. And so I've learned that when I follow up with that email, with an email, with that video, it just helps reinforce some of the content that I explained the first time. And, uh, but you know, I, I just, it's human, right? You're explaining something and you're on 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and they're still thinking about 0.1 or 0.2. And then they totally missed what you were saying on 0.3 or 0.4. So the video gives them an opportunity to go back to some of that. So now there's lots of tools out there that can help you execute with pulling video into your process. So in terms of tools, I use two. And again, I, I'm not totally proficient at this. I, uh, I'm just doing it. I'm getting better every day. But there's two tools I primarily rely on. Number one, YouTube. So I'll use YouTube for videos where I really don't care if other people see them. So maybe there are some common questions that are coming up for clients that are pretty generic. Eh, you know, maybe I'll, I'll, I would put those into YouTube and you know, I can give the customer the link. And, uh, you know, if somebody else kind of comes along and sees it, no big deal. Uh, the second tool that I've been using quite a bit is Loom. And Loom, there's lots of tools like Loom, but it's you can use it for videos where I only want the customer to see it. Now, I don't mind if they forward it, but it's really intended for them. And the other thing that's nice about it is it includes some analytical tools. So I can see how many people viewed the video. Uh, maybe how long did they view the video? Uh, shoot, they can even reply to the video, give it a thumbs up or make a comment or or uh, some other engagement with the video. That's like I said, that's not the only one out there. There's lots of them. That's just one that I started using. And you know how it is. Once you're comfortable with one tool, it's hard to go jump to another tool. Now, again, my personal struggle with all of this is organizing the videos. So I'm trying to tackle this in a few ways. And by the way, I'm totally open to any input that you might have. So number one, I'm a fan of having response templates ready to go that can be adjusted for the specific customer. So I use my example of having a, a, you know, a real estate Q&A call with somebody. I have an email template ready to go. It's always going to be more or less the same follow-up. What this does is it saves so much time. I can have the verbiage in the email ready to go. I can have the video links in the template ready to go. Now, the challenge though is you, you need to have the template file titles very clear and specific because you might have multiple templates based on the type of follow-up that you need to do. Now, the other thing that, that I've been defaulting to, and really this is what all else fails, I go to a spreadsheet or Google Sheets. And when I look at my spreadsheet, I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible, but my headers are you know, maybe column A, the simple topic, right? What is the title or what is the topic of the video? And then the next column might be what's the actual title of the video? And the third column might be general notes or comments, just maybe some insights around the video that just helps me, if I'm in a hurry, give me some context on why the heck did I create that video six months ago? And hmm, is it even valid? What I don't have in there is a date recorded and I should go add that back in because like anything, sometimes content ages out. Now, I have been leveraging Google Sheets and you can do it in Google. I mean, you can do it in Excel and then put it into a Google Drive. But sometimes having it in Google Sheets has made it more accessible for me from any device you know, or from my phone specifically. 
Uh, Office 365 is it now makes it easier, but you know, I was starting to get in, into the habit of using Google Sheets. So now you may be thinking, hmm, this is this is a lot of work and it's going to take some effort. Well, you're a hundred percent correct. <laughs> this is work. And even just like for me sitting down to record you know, this podcast today, it, it takes time to sit down and think about what do you want to say, doing the video saving the video. Shoot, maybe you need to edit it. I wouldn't worry too much about editing. I didn't even talk about that, but just one little side note. I just go for authentic versus something that looks perfect. Don't worry and over-rotate on editing. But going back to the idea of effort and work, this takes a ton of work. Well, it takes work. I don't know about a ton, but this is a type of work that top performers do while the middle of the pack are sitting back watching other people's TikTok videos. So it's really, it's really up to you. you know, do you want to crush it or do you, do you want to just get by? So as I wrap up, what are you doing every day to get better? You know, are you leveraging video? Do you have something else that's really working for you right now? I would love to hear it. Come on the show. Let's chat about it. You can message me through LinkedIn or uh, send me a note through hightechfreedom.com, our website. And uh, thank you for listening to the show. Till next week, make this your best week ever. Thanks again for joining us today. To get more sales and real estate tips, you can subscribe to our newsletter at hightechfreedom.com. You can also join our private Facebook and LinkedIn group that is exclusively for sales professionals. If you found a nugget of good information in the podcast, please subscribe, give us a positive rating and write a review. If there is a topic that you would like us to cover in the future, please send us a note through our website at hightechfreedom.com. Until next week, make this your best week ever.